Welcome back to the PDP. It's your boy, Pops Prince. Today, we got a very special guest. He's a multimedia artist, the creator of Richie the Raccoon, a muralist, visual storyteller, illustrator. Let's give it up for Ellie Sis. That's a bomb effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, would, I would be able to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. How's your day? What you been up to? I know you've been running around. Yeah. Uh, what have I been up to? You did a mural today? Yeah, I've been running around. Um. Yeah, so I just came back from Mexico City for the last 13 days. So today was like the first official day that I'm I'm back in Chicago. Um, yeah, I woke up, uh, painted a mural. My girlfriend has a community space. It's mm -hmm. called Casa Arte. They have the grand opening on the 22nd on basically North Avenue and Western. February? Like, yeah, it's okay. like a couple of days away. Type. We have a collaborative mural with Mario Mena. Sosa, Cookie Kwan, uh, Lori Marr, Joe Sky, Poncho, and me. I, I really hope I'm not leaving anybody out. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did a collab collaborative mural. It's pretty cool. The theme is a, is a kind of a, a mythical land, you know. So it was just figuring out what what was the role for each person. Um, but it all came together really well. So yeah, that's all I was doing. I was painting my characters in the land. Um, the the really cool part though about that whole mural is not only is it because it's like six or seven artists. Oh, I am leaving somebody out. <laughs> my girlfriend's brother. So, so oh, nice. My, my girlfriend Sabrina, her brother the name is Noel. Um, but yeah, he's also uh, he was just later in the project. We we put him on. Um, but yeah, he he's also a part of it. I know you just had the the Valentine's card event. Obviously, I was there. But it's funny because you had posted like sometimes you can't get to all these artists because there's so many. But yeah. you got you had like a good amount. I think it was was it like fourteen or how many artists? It was like twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah. So even and and you still felt like you were missing artists and stuff. Yeah, I mean, with that, it's, it's just um, you know, obviously you 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 know so many artists, right? Like yeah. You when when you've been around the art community in Chicago so long, like you become friends with so many other like minded people or just like people who like the same cultural things or same interests. So, you know, having been in Chicago for the last 10 years, being in different type of art scenes, whether that's graffiti or uh, street art or, you know, uh, trying to jump into contemporary or, you know, um, you, I've just been able to, to meet so many people and become friends that like, if I'm putting on a show and uh, I feel like I can put on as many as possible sometimes you just miss a few i think when well, the the reason i i really felt that was because i was like oh this is a valentine's day card show the cards aren't that big of real estate you know mm -hmm. so it's like oh let me put on a bunch of people let me let me try to see how many people want to do this um so then like once i get my my group that that are down you know i mean they only had two weeks to create a card which, you know it doesn't take much time to create a card unless you're like really deep in thought on that but you know once you get your 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 group to me it was like all right this is it and then i'm scrolling on instagram like a week later i'm like oh fuck i should have invited this person or this person you know like specifically like i seen feds instagram and i've had feds in other shows for me because i think his art is awesome and I was like, Shut damn, up, I should have had his yeah, ass in my yeah. shit, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, I forgot to hit him up, and I forgot to hit this person up, you know? Um, I mean, either way, I guess, you know, the universe works out the way it works out, and everything's meant to be, but, yeah, yeah. sometimes that shit happens. And I, and I think that's, that's this topic is very important to artists, like, especially if there's artists who are just starting, that, like, I've come across it through different artists that are younger, where um, they're like, man, I didn't get invited to the show, but like, dude knows me. Why wouldn't he invite me? Well, it's like you have to show up to these events that you're not a part of. Yeah. So, so that this person can make an interaction with you and you, you guys have some type of connection that they're like, oh shit, yeah, I'm putting on an event. Let me invite this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's like showing face. And that's what like everything. Like, as a dad, it's kind of hard to leave the, like your son because you feel like it has to be worth it. Like, even right now, like, I feel like, like, this is, I know that it's worth it because this is, like, my passion, what I'm doing. But um, for these events, sometimes, like, my girl could get upset. <laughs> it's like, why are you wasting your time, like, going to something that you're not in? But 
yeah, making a connection with like whoever's throwing the event could lead to something in the future for sure. And I think with you with that, I think that was that was one of the things that made me become friends with you too. Like mm. you, I I had seen you came to a couple of my shows from just like even when I initially seen you popping out the scene, like you could have been popping out the scene for forever, you know, but like when we started making interaction, like I was like, oh, this guy came to like my last few shows. Like I want to support him as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? So then I, I looked out for when you had uh, pop-ups with, with Richard or whenever you had something, you know, around around the way, like it made me feel like, oh, like you came to, to see what I do. I want to see what you do and I want to grow, you know, build a yeah. relationship and grow as well. It's like networking. But I think it's important to say, like, to any artist who feels, I guess, offended that they didn't get invited. Like, don't take it personal because I don't think we're, like, because I've had people probably get upset that they didn't get invited but, to my shows either. But. but I also feel like it's just a part of the process. It's a part yeah. of the evolution because, like, I've definitely felt the same way when I was younger as an artist. Like, I was like, man, why didn't this person? And then, like, to hear somebody else younger than me years later say it, I'm like, oh, this is like just a part of that evolution. Like, you know, once 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 my homie who was complaining about it has to like set up an event, then he'll understand. Mm -hmm. Like you you just can't remember everybody. And you're really only gonna remember most of the people that you're like either close with, had a recent interaction with, or also this Valentine's Day card event. Um, one of my other homies, hit me up about my my show that was a month before and was like yo like what about me bro you know <laughs> and it's like all right i guess like you know i didn't i didn't know that you know there there is entitlement right like because mm -hmm. you're my friend you should have invited me but like it's like i didn't know i should even invite you like i haven't you know i haven't rocked with you in, in a little bit so it's like you know um even just extending that hand or message even if it's not in person and that's your homie like if you're like yo next show can you include me like that shit goes a long way too because i included my homie in the valentine's day show just because he you messaged me it, i was putting together a show he he was i hadn't had an interaction with him in a while so i didn't uh even think about doing inv inviting him at first but then like it came across my mind i'm like let me just invite my homie he does raw art you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying um so yeah even, have you have you come across like people who haven't done it in a long time and you kind of like aren't sure if they still want to keep going so i don't know like i've had friends who were raw at some point but they just i don't know if they just got too busy or they just haven't been consistent so you kind of have to like ask them like hey are you still interested in in continuing art um no i never i've never really faced that um i think because like even if i had a friend like that mm -hmm if I know they have really sick art because like I like I like I like you know a certain style or I like certain things in art and like if I know that a homie is super sick I'm still you know there 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 is a list of people that come to my mind initially uh whether it's because I grew with them or like we had shit but it's like even if they're not doing art anymore then that, that's not their main passion like I'm gonna invite them because I know their work is super dope and I want to like have a show where i have like really sick art you know what i'm saying yeah like, i don't want to invite some stuff that's like you know kind of super dull you know i i just i'm not trying to entertain that Interesting. um but i i think i think sometimes you know it's okay to give a couple people opportunities yeah like a chance i like having like people who have been in it for a long time and then like an up-and-coming artist yeah like a, a, a couple is fun yeah. you know what i'm saying like just just to give them that opportunity depending on what it is you know i feel like the new artists i mean i haven't been in it as long as you but there's artists that even when they first start out like they're really strong like right off the bat but then you could kind of see them like lose momentum and kind of like lose like they don't believe in themselves anymore because they didn't get that immediate like return or reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just, I don't know. It's important to like keep going no matter what. Like recently I kind of felt like that. Like I'm stagnant, you know, like mm. I'm very comfortable. Like I'm at the crib just working on whatever. Right. Um, but like I didn't, I haven't felt like my shit's, I always hear people saying like, "Oh yeah, you're doing great." Blah, blah blah. I'm always doing projects, right? But like, I'm like, man, like my my shit just feels like I'm I'm running in a circle, you know. So 
I I took this Mexico trip and like a very there was a lot of inspiration that I had and a lot of evolution uh, to myself. Um, not only my art, but like myself and like certain things. That trip made me think like, yo, sometimes it's it's just really important. Like when you just feel like shit's not going anywhere to mm -hmm. go somewhere else mm -hmm. and like you'll get inspiration in a different way you know because the uni you're 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 taking yourself out of your comfort zone i think that's the difference is like if you're like super comfortable at where you're at it's not a good thing right <laughs> yeah definitely because as humans we always want to evolve mm -hmm. and we're always just thinking of how do we better ourselves because essentially um the key to life is happiness mm -hmm. no matter what like key to life will always be happiness it won't it's not it's not money i think we confuse it to be money because we see a lot of rich people doing a lot of cool things that make people happy but it's like money is definitely not the key to life it's about being happy so is this what you do full-time like art yeah, is full-time yeah, how long has that been like how long yeah like how long have you when was your last job or what was it like it was at mariano's oh shit that shit was probably like <laughs> 2000 14 2015 i'll say 2015 that's crazy i worked at mariano's as a one of those cooks those line cooks those people that handle the rotisserie chickens and they were telling me to wear a cutting glove and then i didn't wear it for some reason and i like i remember i sliced my finger went and got a band-aid and then they were like pissed at me because i didn't wear the glove and then I, I like walked out that day and i went and found another job but what were you doing right and just like a stock person yeah. i was a like the easiest fucking job there honestly um you were there for a while no nah, i've never <laughs> i've honestly i've had like many jobs and i've never like held one for a very long time Same. um but i was the produce like one okay, of the produce okay. dudes and that shit's so easy yeah and it was so chill like i would <laughs> i would i would stack the produce whatever you do what you gotta do um get some free lunchables talk to <laughs> talk to homies there talk to the shorties there like fucking go in the back like chill in the freezer for a while mm -hmm. eat eat some fruit and shit <laughs> like <laughs> that's a very very easy job and it was decent paying for what i thought you know at, at the, the time, time like yeah. being like 21 22 years old um yeah so but since then you've you've been able to live off your art pretty yeah much? yeah i mean for the first couple of years was a little little weird you know it wasn't as much money ever since then it's, it's just keeping up with like you know the same thing of what we're talking about showing face and networking and keep evolving you know so that like your artwork just keeps getting better and better yeah that just connects with people um but yeah it's it's a fucking hustle though mm -hmm. you're just constantly just because it's up to you how much you want to make and like you said you're comfortable right now that's how i felt when i got the because i mean having a kid is a little different because you feel like you need the health benefits and um i was working at nine to five for four years and we had like good insurance we had like everything dental health but uh recently i just got this graphic design job so i work for like a signage company and it's the it's like hybrid so i could work at home they gave me a laptop like i've been learning all this shit for illustrator and it's just like damn now i'm comfortable because now i was using that full-time job as like motivation like damn like fuck this shit like i can't wait to get out like i'm gonna be an artist like i'm gonna get i'm gonna get rich off this shit and then now that i kind of have a job that kind of works with me it's like damn i gotta find like a new motivation or like a new ideally i wouldn't want to work for anybody but this job is like super convenient and it provides uh benefits and shit yeah i mean if you're happy you know if you're yeah. happy, i don't think there's anything wrong with being comfortable if like you're super happy i'm just like i feel in my comfortableness i'm like I'm not where I want to be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, but I think it's fine to be comfortable if, like, that's where you know where you want to be. I don't think so. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, event, like, I want to keep pushing and I want to keep like be my own boss and shit. I mean, I have my business and shit, but um, to be able to actually thrive and so you 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 keep saying evolution. Like, you could tell. Like, obviously, I was listening to your last interview, and this was like 2000. I think they said. 15 or 17 the one that i was telling you about and then um the sleepers one. the way you talk is like completely different and like the way you, like your mannerisms <laughs> and like, <laughs> the, like you seem a lot more calm and a lot more like focused um you just recently turned 30 
right? I turned 31 uh, January 7th, so about like a month ago, a mm-hmm. month and a half ago. So how different is like your life now? Than before? The, yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, but also at the time I'm like 23 years old, fucking Chicagoan that like wants to be a cool guy and fucking doing art that's like popping, meeting new people, meeting like cool ass people and shit and at the clubs and hanging with girls and you know do you keep up with jake i feel like his because he works for like lyrical lemonade or whatever so i always see him on tour and shit no honestly who i connected with sleepers with the most is max and uh oh wow i'm actually gonna i'm staying with him in la he does like the secret wall stuff right yeah well he now works for lefty lefty out there um so yeah i max is like my boy like that's my brother um we went out to berlin maybe a few years after that like two years after that together mm-hmm. went to berlin you know we went to prague we went to iceland uh we did a whole euro trip i mean other people were supposed to go but then people flaked and i'm like i'm, I'm doing that yeah shit. Um, i think i saw you in britain you have a, like a picture or like a video in britain yeah yeah awesome. i i did i did some work out there um but uh yeah other than that like I'm going to LA in like two days and I'm staying at his crib in LA. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's my, that's my guy. Even last time I went to LA, he, uh, he let me stay at his family's crib and shit. And you know, it was a great host to me. Like, dude, it's crazy. I went to LA with, uh, my, with Daisy. Uh, this is like 2017. Randomly we were at a beach, like in Malibu or something. We go to like a tiny, uh, cheesecake factory or some type of restaurant. And Max is there. And we're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, this is so random. And this is after, like, I had already, like, met him and we were cool. And it was just so weird. Like, sometimes, like, I feel like God puts people in your life for, like, a reason. And I don't know what that reason was, but, I mean, he's been doing his thing. So, it's really cool. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. The, Tell him about it. The world the world is small, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's, like, one person away, I feel like. I wanted to bring up, like, the gallery scene. So, you, uh, I know on your page you have, like, all your recent ones. And you had, a uh, you had one at Rob. Rogov. Rotofugi. Rotofugi. How was how was that? Uh it was really cool. That was pure um, vinyl, like toys? Or no, no. So like they have um when you walk in, there's a right wall that's specifically for each month they have, you know, uh a feature artist. artist that okay. they're featuring. And then there's the once you get to the end of that wall, the left of it is another wall, which is shorter. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you have that real estate, both of those. And um so you get to showcase artwork there. It, it was dope. Um, it was also just really cool because when I was in high school, I went to Rauner College Prep, which is off of like Noble and Grand mm-hmm. around that area. So um, I think that's Ecker Park, if I'm not mistaken. Ecker? Ecker, yeah. No. I believe so. It's, that's the one in the area that we used to go to after school and a part of school as well. But um, yeah, uh, fuck, what was I getting at? Is that where you met the road of you guys? Or? Right. So after after high school, um, me and my homies, that's when I was first started getting into graffiti. Um, we would walk all the way down f- to Chicago and Damon. Mm. And then road of Fugi used to be over there. So we would go over there and look at all like the artist like Crazy. toys and shit. We would never buy the artist toy because that's just like expensive. But we would buy like the smaller keychain joints. Mm. Um, Did you ever tell yourself like one day I'm going to be in here? Or- no um and, and they had a gallery next door but i never went in it but i was like man this is cool you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so like full circle like 10 years later and being able to showcase work there was really cool you know yeah, what i'm saying it's awesome and also they're just like highly respected like when mm-hmm. when you walk into that door um they have like a main door and a second door um and like when you walk in that first door they just have a bunch of rewards for like best best uh vinyl figure store or designer toy store for this year that year like they have multiple awards so it's like it's really cool to be able to present with them when it comes to like galleries were you always the one to like reach out or like try to get your work in there or they kind of reach out to you or how does that work for an aspiring Uh, artist that wants to be in a gallery i think i think for aspiring artists like you definitely have to show faces same thing as Mm -hmm. showing face like go to the galleries and then like I think Set Rock said he would bring like a like a portfolio or portfolio. something. Portfolio, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, no, I uh, I think as far as aspiring, the important thing for me was my marketing, and advertising. So like, 
I used to do graffiti for a, a while, got arrested six times. It's like, okay, I need to do this more seriously, take what I like and what I know, which was what I like was drawing characters since I was five. What I know was color theory and aerosol spray paint from graffiti. So then you taught that to yourself. You didn't go yeah. to school for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I went off the streets and shit, um, nice. doing a bunch of graffiti. So like I put that shit together and was like, yo, if cause could do it, which cause came from graffiti. And this is mm -hmm. before the Jordan four. So like cause <laughs> cause was really big before the Jordan four, but to like yeah. a certain scene, like the older heads before me knew about cause and they kind of put me on mm. uh, as far as in secrecy. When you do the bus uh, stop yeah. stuff, that, <laughs> yeah, he's very like, yeah. that's what he's known for. It. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. But yeah, so like he, that like seeing his book back when I was like 19 years old, 18 years old and seeing all the collaborations he was able to do, like knowing that he did a sneaker with Nike, whatever, like my transition from graffiti to uh, illustration work was like from typography and that's like the more technical term graffiti typography to street art which would be the illustration you know typography to illustration um that was definitely motivated by like calls having been a graffiti artist and then went to yeah. that um but yeah from from doing that um i also learned about advertising and marketing because graffiti was like your audience was other graffiti artists which is honestly the weirdest thing when you think about it. <laughs> but your 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 audience as a graffiti artist is other graffiti artists. Mm. And like you're you're advertising as much as yourself around the city for ego and rep, you know what I'm saying? Um so I just apply the same thing to the art scene. It's like my audience is the gallery and the collectors. So I have to advertise on my streets. So I advertise on the streets. I did a bunch of we paste. Once I got some mural opportunities, did some murals, and then I was able to, you know, talk to, go to galleries and be able to be like, oh, yeah, this is who I am. This is what I do. You kind of use that as like leverage. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, strange thing, like being in Vertical Gallery. Vertical Gallery was a, the first gallery I was in, and I was doing a bunch of wee pasting murals, and I had just... I was skate, skateboarding past her and I was like, stop. And I was like, oh, this is a gallery. <laughs> and then Patrick's like, oh, yeah, uh, we just, you know, opened like a year ago or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, yeah, I just came from painting a mural off of like Western and um, and it's by Lake. Um, but it's the pawn shop. I've had it for like years. Um, it's one of my, I mean, it might be my second or third mural. But um, yeah, I was coming from painting that for the first time. And I was like, oh, yeah, I just came from painting this. He's like, oh, that's awesome. He's like. You should be a part of uh, this this my our our holiday show. It's like deck the halls or, and uh, I was like, all right, bet. So that was my first first one, and it's just the same thing, showing face or just like uh, organic interaction. That right. that one is definitely a or organic, organic interaction. You just showed up. You didn't have to like DM nobody or like email anybody. <laughs> no, no, and and I think around that time it was also like Instagram was a tool for advertising as well, but it wasn't like the uh, the norm of like. Mm -hmm you're going to a gallery and like, you know, they're like, what does your Instagram look like? And then you show them your Instagram and shit. It's crazy. Cause even now you're like, you brought up TikTok, like you barely like started figuring out like all the features yeah. and stuff. And you have to adjust to like all these like new ways of uh, promoting your work and shit. Cause I, yeah, I feel like TikTok's pretty popular right now. Um, yeah. My manager tells me I need to do TikTok <laughs> now. You have but, a manager now? Yeah, I do. Wow. She's, she's pretty awesome. Um, she was, she was at the, the uh the Valentine's Day card show like holding it down the whole time, helping me out even after when I went to Mexico City like I literally, literally like, right after that show the show ended at ten but I, I had to leave at nine thirty because my flight to Mexico was yeah. at like eleven or it's 12. crazy because I caught you like right in between flights because you're about to leave right now so it's just a good time it's great and we had to fit it in today specifically <laughs> but um. You brought up your murals. I wanted to talk about that. So I know, I think there's been a case where like somebody went over your shit. Was it like in Wicker? Is it the one that turned into like a butterfly now? Okay. Um, do you, I mean, like, how do you, how do you feel about that? Or like, is that very common? Like, does it happen often? Yeah. So like, I'm <laughs> not, it doesn't press me as yeah. much anymore. Cause I, you understand the graffiti side of it and like all, how the kids are. No, shit. it's not, it's not that's, it's just like, yeah I, I guess kind of um it's just it happens to every like muralist like it mm -hmm. doesn't matter like it doesn't even matter how well you think you're respected in the city right like 
when I when I come back to who I was as a graffiti artist, I was like, man, I like this spot or I like that spot. I like this spot. Yeah, I want like that shit. I don't care. And then like you're like, fuck, like I really want that shit, but like somebody has that shit right now, so I can't do it. Um, so it's like you know sometimes the artists that I know that go over it, they can't fight the urge and then eventually hit my shit. And it's usually the graffiti artists that like. Do you ever reach out to them? They're really like, on their all of like them. A private all of them. I fall. I, I find all of them, no matter what, yeah. because like I have to go back there and fucking take my time out of my day, you know, to do something. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 usually that where it's like, I I would assume that's like somebody really wanted to paint this spot, if they know my work and like they're like fuck like, and then they find found the reason for it, or which more recently it's more of it's just new artists new graffiti mm. artists new graffiti artists don't know who the fuck i am don't know like the reputation how long i've been doing graffiti or like you know beforehand they don't know what crew i'm in like they don't i'm in cmk it's like one of the biggest fucking crews in chicago you know what i'm saying yeah. like they have literally the biggest fucking spot in chicago in the back of the yards that fucking factory like the, the whole top of it so it's like it's usually now more new artists before that though it was like artists that like we had mutual respect for each other but didn't really know each other um and just motherfuckers that really got down so like yeah i'd be pressed because i'm like yo this motherfucker gets it down and he knows i don't do graffiti anymore <laughs> so like he knows i'm not i'm not i'm not about worrying him at all you know what i'm saying so it's like it's annoying because i'm gonna have to go back there and fix it but i also have to confront the situation to right. him personally so, to explain to him like yo this shit's not cool well, I'm under a contract. I got paid for this shit. I got to fix this shit because I'm under contract. So, yeah, it comes it comes to that shit. Some of them, I mean, most of them, whatever, bro. Like, it's, okay, okay. It, you know, like most people, I mean, and, and it's funny because most of the people that have gone over me, I've known, like, I, I've had some type of interaction with them. Like, I kind of know them. Like, none of them have been people that I would consider, like, real friends. So, yeah, I get that. But, like the ones that like aren't the starting artists are like the hardcore graffiti writers that like want to get get up as possible and that's that's what the fuck they do that's their hobby i guess i don't really know much about like graffiti culture i know that for a long time i feel like graffiti artists and muralists don't really mix and like i've seen like beefs on the internet and shit so like did you ever get shit for transitioning to murals or uh no okay no no i mean i'm sure people talk shit i mean people talk shit no matter what you know right. what i'm saying everybody has their own opinion but like yeah um no i was like i was like the king of the area that i stayed in you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like i was like and as far as graffiti goes like i was like that motherfucker that like was everywhere so like nobody tested tested the theory yeah. of like oh he started doing the raccoon like fuck him you know what i'm saying like nobody has said it kind of like pays homage to graffiti anyways but yeah i could see why like i mean this, like well like i said i use the same strategic thought of how i did graffiti to like how i was advertising my my uh character work you know yeah um for the galleries but yeah um no nobody nobody fucked with me um when i transitioned because like i was so up mm. that even while i was doing my character shit my shit was still fucking rocking you feel me and like I had so much street rep as being like the dude who like bombed everywhere, but also was evolving and doing pieces all the time. Mm -hmm. So like I was just respected in the graffiti community too much to, for people to even like just fuck with my shit at that time. Do you see like is that the only way to be successful as an artist, or like could you be successful as a graffiti artist? You know what I'm saying? Like because it's more just for yourself right it's more oh, like an ego thing like can you really make money off of graffiti graffiti <clears throat> yeah i mean the problem is the general consensus of graffiti is um it's bad right mm -hmm. like the general consensus of, of graffiti is it's vandalism and you're terrorizing and it, it is because like when, when once i got older i'm like oh my god a house <laughs> a house is a house in in chicago could be like from fucking six hundred thousand to a million dollars you know if not more and uh so yeah the general consensus of graffiti is is bad and so it's a, typography is a skill and everything and um i do feel like it can be harder for an artist to 
be popular through graffiti. It just depends on how you market yourself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, depends on how. You saw that building in LA? How you sell it. That yeah. Thing, like, yeah. 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 Oh crazy. my God, dude. <laughs> Bro. And I think you think I'm like, oh my God, this shit's crazy. No, bro. I, f- <laughs> oh my God. Since they fucking posted that, that fucking LA tower, dude, I had people DM me and I'm sorry to anybody who DM'd me, <laughs> but like for fucking seven days straight, I had people DMing me about this dumbass LA tower. And I'm like, yes, I get it. It's an LA tower. Cool, bro. Like yeah, it's all graffitied up. Like this just has happened before. Like, oh, really? Th- yeah. Miami has that, had that shit happen uh, when our basil last year, but also like, Miami has had mad fucking sh- towers fucking graffiti like crazy and all that shit, bro. Like, this is not new to us. But, yeah, it was just annoying because mad people kept fucking bombing it. But shout out to, to Edom because when they were posting that L.A. Uh, tower clip. Like and the it time was, lapse. And it was on news. I seen Edom shit was there and, like, Edom's from Chicago. So, like, shout out to him, even though he was one of the people that have gone over my murals. <laughs> I still super respect his ass. He, like... His ass is one of those motherfuckers that, like, really is a bomber and gets down and, like, heavily respected in graffiti. So, like, that shit was cool to see on that L.A. Tower to see and eat him, like, high as fuck up. Um, but, yeah, the L.A. Tower, that shit's cool, though. I'm not going to say it's not cool. It was just annoying that, like, hella people They're just kept DMing me about it. Like, I know you know that I like graffiti and I do. I've done it, you know, whatever. And occasionally I, I do it just to, like flex or whatever because yeah. to show I, I just think it's really easy graffiti is really easy like mm. it was really fucking easy what's like your there's like styles in it right so well like, i guess that's like the difference style? right like okay when i say easy i think graffiti is easy in the sense of um how it's illegal like mm. all you have to do is go out at like 1 a.m to like 5 a.m and then if you want it to be really easy you just have somebody with you and you one of you has the airpod on the other one you has the airpod oh, on. oh that's so smart you communicate yeah. like if you see a car coming in a certain direction and and it's a cop you just tell them and if it's not it doesn't matter because it takes like three minutes to four minutes to like do a uh a throw up you know, which is yeah, like yeah. the bubble letters and all filled in whatever mm-hmm. with the shading the one time i tried to do it in post and i got arrested <laughs> i spent the whole fucking night they gave me a bologna sandwich but that <laughs> my car was still there i was so pissed but that's bro. but that's like that that's what usually happens when it's around the first time did you eat like, the bologna sandwich yeah no no i'm i'm saying like usually yeah you get arrested around like the first time you, you do it because you don't understand the game like dude the first time i got arrested I was with my homie, uh, Robert, and uh, this was around <clears throat> high school, and um, it wasn't the first time me doing graffiti, but it was, uh, like, you know, around that time, and, like, we're, like, all right, in my head, I'm, like, all right, I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's dress in, like, baggy, bummy clothes, so that, like, if a cop, oh, think you're so if a cop comes <laughs> by, I can lay down and make wow. it seem like I'm homeless, you know? That's so funny. And, uh, I'm I'm a very logical person. Like yeah, there's yeah. I don't know why. Like I'm I'm the type of person that likes to think like at least at least one step ahead. I don't I don't know about two steps ahead, three steps ahead. That's hard to con- <laughs> that's hard to conjure because then you have to like know somebody's personality or whatever. You have yeah. to know the business. Um but yeah, that 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 was my thought. Like, oh, I'm with my homie, I'm like, yeah, let's dress in baggy clothes. Like well, if we paint this viaduct or whatever, we can and we see a cop coming, I can just make it seem I'm on homeless or whatever. And at that time when you're eighteen, like I mean, I I didn't realize at that time, but when you're 18, your 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 skin is like fucking smooth as hell, and you look like a baby, so you wouldn't look like a homeless like person. On, <laughs> you'd probably you look like a up. you'd probably look like a dead kid, like on the, <laughs> on the corner. Yeah, that's. But crazy. um, but we were gonna paint it, and then we ended up not, and I I forgot why. I remember there was a hang ski there. That might have been why or whatever the fuck. But um, we might have been said it was too early. But then we we're walking down the street, um, on like North Avenue and Damon around that area, and um some cops just like pulled us over probably because we were wearing baggy clothes. We looked like thugs mm. and they were like, you know, this wicker park at that time. And like, and well, wicker park, I guess has been the same for like 20 years. Um, before that it was more ghetto, but yeah, they, they like pulled us over like, Oh, like, what are you guys up to? Blah, blah, blah. It was late at night. We have baggy clothes. And they thought we were thugs. And then I was like, Oh, like then they're like, Oh, you have spray paint on you. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, Oh, so you're, you're going to do some, you're going to do something with it. Or you're going to spray it on the wall. And I'm like, or they they said you were spray spray painting graffiti and I was like not yet so, 
so they arrested That's me so and not my friend because my friend was you more respectful oh, so man. it was one of those like lesson learned things you know um but yeah so like that was an easy one of me like getting arrested and uh it was just like it's just part of the game when you're doing graffiti you just lesson learned you yeah. know what i'm saying and it's uh, i mean i probably did at least like 300 or 400 pieces of graffiti when i did it for like six seven years but like i don't know um you're always just gonna get arrested eventually unless you're like fucking slides so. though i mean i heard which i guess this goes into lore because i don't have the fact on facts um the graffiti artist named fact you know i heard oh, for wow. a very long time he hadn't gotten arrested for like years and years and facts always be on like doing graffiti like you'll see one pop up like or not one but you'll see like multiple pop up all the time so it's like yeah, but there was a lore about him not not having gotten arrested for a, a stupid long time. And then, like, I heard he got arrested, but I don't know what's true and what's not. I don't have valid sources. The The graffiti crew I'm in is CMK, and that's, like, more of a south side base. Okay. I feel like the crews that he's more in um, could be a north side base. I don't mm-hmm. know if he, he's probably... He's also in, like, D30 and, like, uh, other worldwide crews. A lot of graffiti artists don't like showing their face. You kind of don't mind. Right. I'm not. I'm not a really graffiti artist anymore. anymore. At that okay. time, I was a graffiti artist. You know when I and did. they're cool with like you talking about it. Or uh, um. I don't know. <laughs> I but I also. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Like I feel like some people. I mean, like, I'm not, on my I, last pod, he asked me to bleep bleep out some shit. So I, I was like, oh. I can't. I mean, I'm not gonna say who the gra- right, graffiti yeah. artist's real name is. Like that's a whole different thing. I think. I think no, but CMK is like a pretty popular. Like even I, me knowing nothing about, like cruise and shit like i've heard of cmk yeah yeah um but yeah the fact is like yeah he's, he's i there. guess i'm not i'm not part of the world that he's in to be able to fact check what's true and what's mm-hmm. not true lore it's just lore yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, i don't know legendary after the graffiti stuff you transition to the galleries you get in some like a more mainstream um <laughs> events and stuff and now you've worked with like companies like uh i saw at t um vans just like all these big companies how does that does that come organically as well or do you reach out and are you like your manager reaches out and stuff um i mean i I just recently started working with my manager so um but no all that all that stuff uh beforehand of working out with her um that it could be either or you know it Mm -hmm. could be organic it could be you reaching out um i do feel like the best connections though have been organic like you show up to an event and then you start talking to people and then you're like oh yeah oh you work for at&t or like you know whatever or even it could be like your friends like oh yeah this is my homie i he works for blah blah blah. and then you're like oh shit hook me up whatever like give me the contact so i can like contact him or whatever the hell or you know again it like goes back to like showing up and like showing face yeah i think yeah. organic is usually the way though um unless you have like a very fucking strong portfolio mm. that like is super universal to what that brand is looking for you know do you have a favorite one that sticks out or like one that that i've done yeah i think what was really cool for me was um one of my more recent um projects which was i painted uh, a mural for wb pictures it was uh for the blue beetle movie oh yeah that was fire i and saw it, that it's just because like since i was a kid um you know as, as a kid i didn't have i didn't have a dad my my uncle was like my my dad you know? mm. so like he taught me about comic books and, and superheroes and whatever like that's what he was into geek shit so like me being able to to do a mural about a superhero that i thought was super dope because like you knew about blue beetle I knew like previously about, yeah oh, fire. yeah yeah so like blue beetle i i i knew about him through um animated movies of mm. dc of teen titans and stuff like that and i was like oh this is dope he's a hispanic yeah and there's uh, not that much bro like now that i like look back like i don't think there's any like main character who's a hispanic like representing so that's really cool yeah there's there's few but yeah it was it was cool to do that just because like the whole superhero shit mm. you know it was like an official like superhero thing when it came to that um like you didn't use richie he made it like a human or like a yeah i mean that also that also is like i have to use my i have to work within my parameters of what they want you know what i'm saying they told you not to they didn't tell me not to but i knew they would they would have told me not to you know say like (laughs) why is the why is why is there a raccoon dressed in blue beetle like that does it we're trying to promote our movie Mm -hmm. like you know sometimes there's too many layers but but like but no but like 
at the same time, this is this is something that's very important. Is like, as like you're you're talking about. Oh, how do you feel about graffiti artists um, being in the art scene? I I I think it is a little bit more difficult. Like I said, the general consensus, but it's like it's it's understanding that you have your own unique style and nobody else has that style. So if you interpret it in a different way, people will still connect that to to you. Mm. So like me doing a uh, a human character. I know people are still going to connect that to me because there's a certain way that I draw. So in the same sense of what I'm talking about graffiti, it's like graffiti artists. And I thought about this for years is like graffiti artists really mainly focus on themselves because they're always just painting their own name. However, if you marketed yourself in a different way, whereas like you just painted your letters to say somebody else's name or somebody else's corporation, that's another way that you could with your style easily mm -hmm. market yourself to to other companies and use that to get into art world or company world collaboration you know what i'm saying yeah. um but yeah so the wb picture is blue beauty meal was awesome also i can't i can't end that note without saying um that my girlfriend's uh non-for-profit was the one that hooked me up with that her non-for-profit is called somos arte and she works with her friend um melanie they're both like really run it um, together. And Melanie had gotten the contact and was like, oh yeah, they're trying to look for somebody to do some promotion mural, you know, uh, advertising. And like the coolest part about it is like WB was fine with me creating my own art for it. Like mm -hmm. I think that was the coolest part is like I was able to like create my own shit whereas i didn't have to go off of uh, what they told you and you yeah, just like basically a, be like a commission like a comic book page or like a uh, an advertisement <clears throat> that was like for specific fat which that that would have been cool with me too but like to have my own image that like looked like super graffiti kind of kid looking was like really cool it's really awesome did you like the movie like yeah i, I loved it, it actually okay. um I, I felt like there was a lot of different um superheroes that that was in that movie, but I think Hispanic representation was like super hardcore in that movie, which was really cool. Yeah. I think anybody who's like Mexican and hasn't seen that movie should see it because like there's a lot of like homage to Mexican culture throughout that whole movie. The grandma was going crazy too. Yeah. yeah. Was, <laughs> you still, you seen it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. It's it it really good. I saw it with my son too. It also but... reminded me kind of a Spider Man, the whole like um them trying to hit you in the heart shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's always something. They always got to go through something. <laughs> well, not always really no i don't think like it's I mean, like a superhero that hasn't gone through hardship really. you watch iron man like iron man didn't like his parents died yeah but they, they don't focus on that that's true like yeah. spider-man they super focus on that mm -hmm. batman like it's like in the beginning that died but it's, it's like that's who he was but like they don't fucking mention that throughout the whole thing batman's just fucking i get shit done you know yeah you've started incorporating this tiger um does he have a name? Is he still considered Richie, or is he? Does he have a name? No, he has a name. I mean, what's his I, name? The 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 weird part is like, I I like the name I picked for him, which mm -hmm. is it's King, King. But it's okay. also like one of those things that's like it's it's doesn't. I'm a very I'm I'm the type of person that likes to, I like to try to be humble, so to like label something as King, within my universe like feels strange, but they're they're. There is a logic and reason to it because a tiger is the king of the jungle. Is it really? I thought it was a lion. No. It's the, a king? The lion is, well, the lion is in the jungle. Oh, the lion's like more in deserts and shit. Yeah. So the king of the jungle is, is the tiger. Nice. Yeah. So that was the whole reason why I, I call him king. That's really cool. It's funny how um, your first character, well, no, I mean, your name comes from Aladdin, but now I'm just thinking about uh, the jungle book and there's a tiger in there, but it'd be... But also in yeah. Aladdin, there's a there's a tiger. Oh, there's a tiger, yeah. Raja. Wow. Yeah, my my girl loves Aladdin. I, I painted her like her and the tiger before, but it's really cool, man. Um, do you see any like other like animals coming into your universe soon? Or yeah, yeah, dude. I'm well, I'm creating a graphic novel. Oh, okay. So like, um, and they're all gonna have different names. There are certain like certain things that are like. <clears throat> I am not unveiling yet. Yeah. I'm like soft unveiling. Like even me going to Japan um in a week. Like Is this your first time? Yeah, I've never been. I know you you and Rich I went with Rich. Been. That was amazing. And he's gone like multiple times. <laughs> he's gone like three times. That's like his favorite thing. He wants to move out there. So I mean I hope he does. Because then I'll have somewhere to stay. <laughs> yeah. That'd be it's, it's beautiful. How long are you going for? It's a long time, right? Three months, yeah. 
Um, damn. So what are you, uh, I guess you can't really talk about it or like, what are you looking to do over there? No, no, it's, like, not, it's not that. I was just saying like, well, as far as like the characters okay. that I'm, I'm unveiling, um, yeah, there, there is some Japanese inspiration that I've been thinking about for like at least a year, you know, that like has been incorporated within my graphic novel. That's a character. Um, but uh, no, I'm going to Japan because like, you know, I'm trying to evolve as an artist. You know, I, mm. I feel like what I do here is is cool and and that that's cool. I'm respected over here, but I think once you're respected and shit's comfortable, you just have to kind of go somewhere else and then meet new people, make new friends, see where that culture gets you. Um, but Japan, like, I don't know. I'm just trying to find what different inspirations uh, lead me and like how I'm going to evolve as a human over there. Um, learning their culture. So, yeah. But it, yeah. And then also a big part of it is that I just went to Mexico city, right? I was there for like 13 days. Today is my first day back. Um, and now I'm going to Japan a week later, like for fucking three months. Um, my girlfriend, she bought a building with her family, which is great. You know, mm -hmm. um, she's an amazing woman, like fucking top notch, like, shit you know <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's like fuck like i knew i knew like being in a relationship with her would be amazing and like i knew she was an amazing person but like the more i've been with her and like fuck she's and she's provided opportunities for you too yeah like, you guys I mean, work well together yeah, like... she's the thing is like being being a chicago kid like you get into so much bullshit and you think you think uh doing like bad shit is cool you know so so like to 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 have met her like you know coming from graffiti and doing illegal shit and meeting somebody who's like so wholesome and wants to help people and like it's just only likes to do good shit and doesn't like bad shit like it was refreshing and like i knew she was a great person so um i know that i want to have a kid with her um let's go eventually you know what i'm saying Travel along. Um, <laughs> <laughs> i know i want to have a kid with her eventually so it's like she bought a building and it'll be done by june and i'm like you know if we have the building you know we could possibly you know have a kid so it's like being able to go to places that i wanted to go before that building interesting was done. Got um it. because i've always wanted to go to mexico all my best friends are pretty much mexican like almost all of them if i'm because i don't want to say all of them because then it was <laughs> one offended. of my best friends isn't fucking mexican yeah. and i don't remember whatever um but yeah pretty much all my my best friends are mexican so i love mexican culture um it's great because like within that culture like i've been able to sleep over people's houses and their moms cook for me and their dads are mad because i ate their their food that would have been leftovers is your girl mexican my girl is Mexican. Okay. But that's, she wasn't born on. Uh, she wasn't raised on Mexican culture. She was uh, raised on Puerto Rico. I honestly think Mexicans have the best food, and it's crazy. I don't know if it's because my girl's Mexican, but like I was, I genuinely think they have the best food. It's hard to say that. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say that for me, just because like I love diversity in food. I don't like to eat the same food twice mm -hmm. within a week. Um, so like I do feel like Mexican food is really good. It's really good. But I also love a hibarito, which is a Puerto Rican sandwich yeah. on a plantain see like colombians we don't have like i mean we have like ajiaco which is like a soup but we don't have like a like a hibarito is like understandable because that's like oh, a you're good saying meal. like a filling we don't have like a meal or like a, a thing like you can't really call soup like the best soup or like it could be the best soup but it's not like a dish i don't know well even a hibarito was uh it was uh, and i believe it's true is was made in chicago oh wow yeah, it's not like a typical Puerto Rican Puerto Rican Chicago shit. wow yeah um have you been a, you've been a part of it right yeah a couple of times um i used to live there as a kid you were born there or... oh, i was born in chicago i didn't know my dad because my dad was a bad person so like oh. my mom took me to puerto rico as a kid and then i lived there for like a couple of years my first language was spanish i came back to america yeah. i lived with my uncle who was like my father figure like i said he had a white wife so like they didn't speak much spanish in there so then i went to grammar school forgot spanish learned yeah. english and fucking same here bro yeah i, I want that accent though <laughs> I, I want the colombian you accent you know honestly it's like, bro i don't know about puerto ricans it's a little more like i was gonna say it's a hot take because like <laughs> when i hear puerto ricans speak like and no too fast. I, I feel bad for saying this but like i just i don't like the way it sounds like it it's it's very common with uh people off the coast like i like colombians off the coast like uh like got the hand they kind of 
Like they don't finish their words. I don't know. It's like a, I like the way that women speak Spanish and mm-hmm. Puerto Rican, but like I feel like it's really flagrant when men speak Spanish. Okay. It's like it like in my head it, it just sounds very metrosexual. So how's your f- Spanish now? Do you feel it's like It's terrible. I don't oh, know really? Spanish. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's something we could learn, but hopefully you pick up Japanese. I mean, three months, you have yeah. a good time. I, I will say though, like not every every Puerto Rican male's Spanish has sound sounded very feminine, like many mass uh, metrosexual. Like when I talk to JC Rivera and I've heard JC Rivera uh, speak Spanish, it doesn't sound very metrosexual. It sounds like normal. Like this guy just has an accent, you know. What I'm like, saying? Um... I think with is it metrosexual or what's the word like not mask misogynistic. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the word? That's not what you're trying to say? No. Oh, okay. When I say it's metrosexual, it's like, it's saying that, like, you're not trying to be flamboyant in the sense of, like, showcasing that you're 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 trying to be feminine. Um, So that's why I was trying to say, I wasn't trying to say, oh, they sound feminine. Mm-hmm. They, they just sound metrosexual. Because, like, when I, if I go to Puerto Rico and I hear the way the natives talk, they kind of sound a little metrosexual. Whereas, like, I've known JC and he's lived in the States in America for a while. But like when I hear him speak Spanish, he doesn't sound metrosexual. He does. He sounds like a man that just speaks Spanish that has a little bit of an accent. Interesting. Yeah. There's like different cadences and everything. And like, I've noticed like Colombians sound like they're asking a question all the time. <laughs> I don't know how we got on this topic, but, um, so family, you, you want a boy or a girl? Or you haven't really, you don't care. Either one. Is that a hot take to say what you want? <laughs> I've uh, I've had people tell me. Like, I think uh, my last guest told me that they want a boy first and then a girl. I think the world is easier on men. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the world is way easier on men. So I'd rather, that's the reason why I'd rather have a boy. You name him Richie? Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, fuck. That'd be crazy. Richard is the worst man ever. <laughs> Damn, <I'm> filthy rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just like, that's a joke. Um, that's so it's, not, it's not the worst. Have you guys ever. talked about that? How your character is named after him, or you've never talked to him about? No, I mean, I, I've, I've I've have different friends that are named Richard. Oh, okay. you know I'm um, but no, um, I have a couple names that are just lined up and shit. But yeah, I just I think the world is easier on men. Uh, women, it can be hard, and it can be even harder. You know when you're a woman and and you're confused about your identity because the world tells you that you need to be straight and you have to like guys or like you know what if you're tr- you're a woman and you're transgender and then you have like fucking double you know the world's fucking you know I, well, the world is changing but you know I, I just feel like the world is harder for women so like if i have a kid i'd want and i hope I don't, I don't know if you have a girl or not. So I feel I bad. Or anybody else who's listening. I, I want a girl. I want a girl next. I would like to have my third child be a girl. It's, a, it's just, like I bro, pick. I'm so grateful. I mean, you actually could pick nowadays. It's I'm so crazy. grateful for being a guy. I don't have to have a period. Like, I don't, Dude, I don't have to have, like, a, a, a pay difference, mm-hmm. like, based on, on the world. Like, I don't have to have all these things. So it's like, yeah, I just feel the world is harder on women. And if, if it wasn't, you know, because, yeah. <clears> definitely. This, this is hard. Yeah, we have some questions. I wanted to ask you now before I forget. So Connie, she, uh, Konnichiwa, she's done like the Pokemon shows. Um, she said, do you plan to include any new character? We already covered that. Well, to, to expand on that question, unless you want to keep going. For, was there anything else? She asked like four questions, but you could, I guess, if you have like. <laughs> um, well, like, I is, think I think for, as far as the characters go, um, expanding more of the universe. I Yeah, I think the more I'm learning about life, the more I'm, I'm taking new experiences, traveling different places. I think I'll always be inspired to like, uh, build up more and more universe. Like Mm -hmm. I can create one graphic novel, but then I can create another one, you know, and then just keep expanding what characters I want to do with that. Do you think they'll all have like similar characteristics? I think the tiger has green eyes and the same ears as Richie. I know. I I think about it every time, but but then I also, (laughs) but also I'm like, I, I, I only do it because, you know, it's a, it's a thing because I have fucking Hazel with the green eyes. So Mm -hmm. like, I, that's the reason why I put it on, but I kind of want to keep the, the tiger with, um, with turquoise eyes. But like, uh, when I'm painting, I always bring two, at least two, two greens and then maybe a yellow. So then I'm able to um, shade his green eyes and I'm like, all right, I already have this. So I'll just use yeah. it for the tiger. It's well. really interesting. Like having colored eyes, I think they change, right? I don't know if that happens with you, but I know with my friend, the jazz is it like changes with what he's wearing. 
It's like I'll I never have no know. idea. Well, that never happened. See, I wouldn't know because I can't see my eyes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. I, I really know. wouldn't know. I mean, yeah, I've, I've heard eyes, sometimes so. my eyes look a certain way or whatever yeah. the fuck. I don't know. That's crazy. Um, she asked, "When's the last time you skateboarded? Oh, Do you still man. skateboard?" No, I skateboarded like in the summertime. Um, I ran into Timmy Johnson at Clemente. Clemente, have you ever been to Clemente? Uh, Use works there. Do you know Use? She's another artist. Okay. So it's really. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I guess the pronunciation of Use, I thought Y O O S. Oh no. But yeah, it's Y U E S. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I the last time I skated was at Clemente Skate Park in the back. Um, and I ran into Timmy, which is like a pro skater in Chicago. So anybody who's a skateboarder that is listening to this obviously would understand what I'm saying. But yeah, I, I did a couple of shits there. But I want to get back into it. Like yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. My homie that I'm staying with in Japan for three weeks lives in Okinawa. We used to skateboard when we were in high school. So like, I'm probably gonna go out there with two trucks and buy a skateboard out there and then skate with him. Nice. It's also just like, I built up like. Three percent, five percent of body fat. So <laughs> you're fit as fuck. I uh, no, I'm, I'm fit, but like, no. When you skateboard, bro, like you, you have weight? you have at least a four pack. Like, wow. At least like you're the bottom half because you're like constantly, um, crunching yourself over to pop yourself back up. You so use like, your abs when you skate. Yeah, your core is like your hella. Core? Your core is like almost half of what you're doing. Wow, that's so, really cool. Yeah, that's the scary part though. Is mm. like. You can still land something, but like you're not landing right, then your core can be affected and your back mm. can hurt the next day. And that's what I'm afraid of going forward as an adult. As long as you stretch, I guess you should be fine, which I stretch when I when I work out, work out. But like, you know, you can land weird and then like your back hurt the next day. I'm afraid to I'm afraid to feel that cuz once you feel that, you're like I feel my age, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's crazy. I remember I think it was the the Jordan movie or like the movie about his first shoe we ran into each other at the movie theater and you were like telling me like um i just did legs bro i'm like super tired or something yeah. so like fitness is very important in your life for sure like you've always gone to the gym no i haven't always gone to the gym i started going to the gym when i was like maybe like 23 mm. 24 um that was when like you know i moved out my mom's crib started staying at my own place and I had just broken up with like you know a girl that i really liked and yeah i just i was a skinny kid so <laughs> i've always been had a very high uh what is that called a high uh metabolism meta- exactly thank you so much <laughs> uh, i've always had a high metabolism so i was very skinny i was always fit in some type of way but i didn't have any pecs i didn't have mm-hmm. you know i was just like you know skinny fit and and now you take like protein, you like the gains, yeah. the so, gains are real. So then I started like at that time working out and I, I did pull ups and, and push ups and whatever. And I used a lot of anger to motivate me when mm-hmm. I was working out. Wow. I, I used a lot of anger to motivate me at that time. Now I'm like really more serene, but like, yeah, that was like a lot of what reason why I did that shit. Cause I was like, man, I'm skinny. Like, and then I take like whatever I'm mad at to like do all mm. this extra. And then my homie, um, he's not my homie, but at the time he reached out to me on Instagram like, "Yo, I'm a trainer." So then he taught me like he, I would go to Planet Fitness with him, um, and he like taught me about how to use all this equipment, train me and shit. So ever since I learned how to do that, you know. Are you still at Planet? Yeah, I mean it's like fucking ten dollars a month. Why wouldn't <laughs> I? <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, no, there, there are, there. I mean, I haven't evolved yet in this sense, but like, um, there are benefits to going to certain gyms. Like, is that open twenty four hours? Yeah, it is. Okay, but there, there, I, I hear, and like I'm saying, I haven't evolved to yet, but I hear there are certain benefits to going to certain gyms. Like, if you go to a gym that's like, um, more expensive, <laughs> that's like for the elite, mm. you can oh, like a lifetime you, or something. I don't know. But you can you can build friendships with people that are there, mm-hmm. network and like because these are like minded people. These are people who are always trying to evolve. I've heard that too, yeah. That also probably have already like gotten their life together so that you guys can merge and Yeah. Fucking... At the same time when I'm at the gym I don't really think I talk to anybody. At the same time, that's what <laughs> I think too, right? So I'm wondering if that shit's true, but it could be true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I mean, go to LA if, fitness right now. If if you think i mean also think about it if you're if you have a gym at a nice ass condo you live at mm-hmm. 
and like somebody wants you to spot them that know, could lead i've to asked something. people to spot me that i don't know <laughs> You know, like you could possibly build a friendship with that person. Yeah, I told. Uh, what were you gonna say? I told this story on on the other podcast that, I have, but I had somebody ask me to spot them while they were squatting, and I've only ever spotted somebody while they're benching. But like squatting, you have to go like get like right behind them. And I was like, I had, I let the guy down, and he like kind of hurt himself. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's an awkward position. Yeah, like you have to get really close to. And then I got to go back to my workout and we just see each other during like yeah. the remainder of our workout. But yeah, I feel you in the sense of like, oh, it's it, it would be hard to connect to somebody because when you're working out, you're like super focused on. Your you gain. probably have your headphones in too. Yeah, you're focused on your gains. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's not it's not about congregating um, as much as about self-improvement. Some people do. I feel like some people make a whole day out of it or like you they'll talk to everybody. Like you always At see the like gym? really soul people. Yeah, like they like. If you're a trainer or like even like the older men like yeah. 60s 80s i feel like that's like there like, i haven't evolved today yeah we're not there well, i'm not saying because <laughs> they're 60 or 80 but like even like the congregating with people mm -hmm. type shit like i'm nice to people like i'm courteous but i don't i i'm just not at the point of like talking to people you know what i'm saying yeah i'm sure it helps with like your mental health though right like the working out working out or do you feel like it like uh I don't know. That could, that it could be. It could go either way, right? I mean, somebody who works out could be very egotistical and narcissistic, and mm. might be like, "I look fucking cool as hell. <laughs> I'm the shit. Fuck with me." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it, it affects my mental health. I think for me, the reason why I always want to kind of be fit is because I want to be 70 years old and not feel like shit. I guess. I wanted to bring up like your mental health because you said that you go to therapy or you, like therapy has helped you. I don't go to therapy. Oh, damn. I thought How, you, however, you told me to No, no, no. Know. Therapy is, I, I think therapy is very important though. Yeah. I, I haven't evolved myself to go to therapy yet. Um, but I think therapy is very important. Anybody who goes to therapy is very emotionally intelligent and is very intelligent in the sense of understanding themselves. I think therapy is, is really good. Um, reflecting, right? Like, uh, as far as me, I reflect on, on my life. I reflect on everything I've done. You know, sometimes you have the crossroads of a decision, whether to do the right thing or the wrong thing, whether to be selfish or selfless. So self-reflection is, is really important in life because you get to look at what decisions you did. And sometimes you think about the bad decision you did. And sometimes you don't think about the bad decision you did. You just fucking let it go and put it to the side and think, oh, I'm not going to think about this again. And this doesn't affect me. Yeah. But therapy really lets you understand um, how those decisions can affect you long term. How like putting off something and not confronting something can really actually affect you in the real world. And even just like thinking about your life and how it started as a kid, how something, how something could have affected you in, in, in a way of trauma or some shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, without you even knowing. I think that's why I enjoy this podcast so much because I'm able to speak my thoughts. And um, a lot of times like we keep this shit in our head and when we speak on it or like even just me talking about my day or uh manifesting some shit it, it really does lead to shit it's crazy yeah as far as therapy like like i was saying self-reflecting i haven't gone to therapy yet but i do self-reflect self a lot mm -hmm. you know i think about like my childhood and the things that really do hurt me you know what i'm saying or the, the decisions i made that, that i feel like affect and hurt me and you know like i have made self-reflections in the way of like that have made me really emotional made me cry whatever i'm saying um to like understand why I may have felt this way or why I may have taken this this action so I don't do that same bad reaction again. Yeah. You know, it's it's like I think therapy and, and self reflection is really important to understanding who you are in order to evolve and be a better person. That's really crazy because I think having a kid, um, so my six year old, I I see myself in him. I see like all the bad things that I thought about myself in him and it's a weird um manifestation of like all the things I 
I like hate about myself or like don't like about myself. And it's like in human form because it's like, it's my own, um, expectations. Like I, I like try to understand that he's a whole different person. He's got his whole different like life, mm. but, um, it's really hard when he looks exactly like me. And like, I see him go through the hardships that like I went through certain, like, like he's getting a little chubby right now. And I was like really big when I was younger and just like, I, I don't want to be too like strict on him, so it's just crazy. Like, how do you figure out how to be um, a good, sensitive, and and like have him understand, you know, your point of view on something? Yeah, yeah, that's uh that's an interesting. Yeah, because I, I imagine like if I if I didn't have a kid right now, like reflecting would be even harder. Um, so it's really cool that you're at that point where you're able to like understand all the all the trauma that you went to and like. Well, I mean, it's. It's about taking um, ownership of your actions, right? Mm. Like if you're you're so egotistical that you can't take ownership, then you're not really going to be on the right path to make um, real connections with people because you think life revolves around you, right? Yeah, definitely. So like if you can reflect and understand, you know, because even like, man, dude, like I'm sure almost everybody goes through it, but like when you're a kid, you think that your parents – understand the world right oh yeah and then once you get older you realize damn dude this shit's fucking crazy i mean life is crazy it's a fucking blessing mm -hmm. you know but like life is crazy and like this was their first time too so understanding the moments in your life that you think are very difficult and you think that your parents calls that um you have to reflect on on yourself but you also have to reflect on this is their first time being a parent you know what i'm yeah. saying on um, at whatever age they were and they'll make mistakes too so you have to understand you know the world works in the way it works and shit happens and um yeah I don't, you have to think in in the sense of matter and dig deeper and then like not not take it upon yourself to be like fuck you mom or fuck you mm. dad like you did this or that like they have their own childhood too that was traumatic you know like oh, they yeah, have their they, yeah. they have their yeah. own thing and your grandma and your grandpa had their own thing and like it is a continuous cycle and unless you like work on yourself and work on the trauma that you go through to not give that to like your your, kid. your your kids for them to pass it on i mean how are you any better in the sense i yeah, guess yeah. but like yeah, just don't. I don't know. It's don't don't put too much on on your fucking family. If shit went wrong, shit goes wrong. You know what I'm saying? Just understand how to break that cycle. Right. You could be the one to change it. Yeah. Um. How's your relationship with your mom now? Like we're cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. When you got your hand tattoo, was she driven or not really? I feel like my mom when she I, saw my neck one, she was like, I started what the getting hell? I started getting tattoos once I moved out. My mom's okay. Puerto Rican. She didn't really fuck with that shit. Um. Yeah, I mean, my mom tripped whenever I get a tattoo. <laughs> I haven't gotten a tattoo in a minute. I, I It's another thing where I'm saying, oh, I worked out on anger. I, I, I feel like I got tattoos around a time where I would make a lot of mistakes. And like, Interesting. I just, like, but that's kind of cool because they remind you of the mistake. And then kind of, but like again. most of the tattoos I got just remind me of like cool shit I like. Like the one on um, my hand has... Frieza. Uh, yeah, Frieza with a sword going through it to remind me of trunks. And it makes me think of no... No weapon formed against me will mm -hmm. prosper. That's like literally what I go by with that tattoo. That's really cool. The tiger on my arm is about fucking. I just love tigers. I've loved tigers even before I did the rich, the Richie Raccoon. Mm -hmm. If I could have done a tiger, I just didn't know how to draw one at that time. Crazy. Um, I think about that all the time. Like even my son, he thinks that my favorite animal is a pig because I do so many pigs. But I love the panda. So I think if I was to introduce a second character, it would be a panda. Um, I, I love see, Kung Fu Panda. I see I love one now. There's nothing stopping you. Right? Yeah. So I might, um, maybe this year will be the year. But it's really funny how we both have like uh, mascots and uh, they're not. Your favorite character? They're not our favorite character, but they're also not like. Uh, you know how it's like Predator and then what's the one that's kind of like Prey? Prey? Yeah. I feel like raccoons aren't really like. Like they're not like a tiger, you know? Like a tiger is like. Well, the. The point of More the rac the, rac the point of the raccoon for me was uh, the raccoon embodied the aesthetic of graffiti. Yeah. So like I was coming from graffiti and I wanted to make a character that like 
paid homage to to where I came from, going um, out at night, and who I was. Like mm. the, Richie was is really me in my my like teenage years. I mean, that's that's like my character, and I still am like that. I'm I'm a fucking man child in a way. Like, <laughs> I like to be fun, and I like to to make jokes, and I like to you know. There is also the the mature side of me, you know what I'm saying? But like, I have that side of me, and I'm grateful that I do, and I'm grateful for the work that I do that like keeps that yeah part of me. Do you ever? Um, well, I guess you have had pieces where you don't incorporate the the raccoon, um, so you don't feel like limited to the raccoon because you could still like do human pieces, like the blue beetle. Yeah, and like, like like I was saying, like it's like it's something for artists to keep in mind that like. Even if you feel like, oh, I'm not drawing my same same main character. If you draw something else, people will still appreciate it because you have your own unique style. And even if you don't think you do, you definitely do. Like mm. people will appreciate that you drew something else. Yeah, that's fire. I think that's important to say, even for me to hear, because yeah, I feel like so limited with the pig, and like I hate when people tell me like like that's all I do because it's not because I've done like I have a Dragon Ball Z piece right there and like I love drawing sneakers and I love drawing like streetwear um it's kind of crazy I want to talk about your fashion uh style because recently I feel like this is my first time seeing you in like some streetwear in a long time I feel like you've been wearing like polos and like button up <laughs> <laughs> and like I don't know if that was when you hit 30 but you were like I'm gonna be on my grown man shit but how does that um yeah like talk about like your style because you were in like babe supreme and like all like you were like one of the first people i think i saw with like a babe hoodie like it's crazy just street wearing um, down. the difference the difference is um you know taking my job like really more seriously like i feel like for the last couple of years like i know i'm a creative this is my full time this is what i do check out what i do i create dope shit buy it if you want this is this is cool. I'm playing artist, but more recently it's like I have a woman that I love. I want to have a kid. I want to have a job. I'm not a job. I'm sorry. I want to have a house. You know what I'm saying? Like I want to have. Uh, I want to be able to provide. Like I'm. Not, I don't want to play artist anymore. Like I want to be a professional artist that like is on their shit constantly. That like is lining up shit like a year six seven months in advance a year in advance like i want to have shit ready to create like i want to have a manager that's getting shit done that like is setting my shit up for me that all i have to do is create so it's like my transition into to understanding men's fashion in the sense of um business casual yeah to streetwear was really just taking my job more serious whereas i'm 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 making myself more presentable to a mature crowd so that they can take me seriously so i'm gonna dress i'm already working out like my body is fit so i'm gonna dress in some nice nice polos from express men yeah, yeah. that fucking are fitted and like my mom got me some dress pants a couple of years ago that are nice i'll dress it with those and shit and like i got some nice belts i got a nice watch you know what i'm saying like i'm i'm making myself presentable because i am a, a, a reflection when when you see me your first your first thought when you see me is very important so if, if i'm at a gallery and i'm in streetwear that's cool like as a young and i'm like at, at that time i'm like all right i'm popping i'm making money what i think is money you know what i'm saying i'm making money i'm popping like you're gonna fuck with me anyway you know whatever but my mind state more recently because there are things i find more important than just myself I want myself to look like a businessman and I want people to understand that I'm serious about my life. So that's why I wear more dress clothes when it comes to um, places that I feel like uh, like-minded people who are evolving or people who I want to become friends with um, will be there, I guess. Um, I could say it, yeah. I wonder, like, do you think it was start wearing suits and shit too? Like, I don't know if like I'm whole, in that. Like, I don't know if I'm in that category. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I try to envision myself like. There's a storyline for Spider-Man. Uh, it's the House of M version of Spider-Man. Hmm. House of M version of Spider-Man is the version that Scarlet Witch uh, she created that universe, and House of M. Um, 
Spider-Man is just successful as fuck, dude. He, <laughs> he, he's in a suit. He's invented tech, whatever it is. And he makes so much money that he's in a business suit in an office in a skyscraper type shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I try to envision myself sometimes, like, maybe that could be me. But I don't know if that's the world that I live in. Like, I don't know if, like, I don't know if I'm that, I can be that far gone to, like, feel like a suit is necessary. Because I feel like I like the way I look in business casual polo. Like, a zip of polo and some dress pants and a nice, a nice whatever. I feel like, and no offense to anybody who wears ties, I don't understand them. <laughs> I'm a very logical person, like I've said before, yeah. and I, I I don't understand the point of a tie because it doesn't do any function. It's more for presentation, and, like, you could choke somebody with a tie on. The history of a tie is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know it. You know it? No. Okay. I'll probably put it in here maybe after this. I like. I, I feel like a bull tie makes more sense. I, and like I'm saying, it's, it's only because, like, you can choke somebody with a tie. Like, you could literally probably... Like someone who has one, you can choke That's them? probably why James Bond only wears bull ties. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. It's kind of cool how even at this age, you're still, like, being influenced by comics and cartoons and stuff. Like, it's still very present. In, well, like, it's culture. You know, yeah. it's American culture. Yeah. But it's, like, considered, quote-unquote, like, geek, ho- geek culture. But it's, like, yeah. you're very... Like you but know I, your shit, like you, like all the nostalgia. I create cartoons stuff. though. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah. Like I create illustrations. Um, so it's like just a part of who I am. It's really cool. Is that shirt that you have on like new merch or? No, no. Um, it has a raccoon on it. It is. So like, it is funny though. Uh, yeah. so so I I've been like I said I was in Mexico City for the thir- last thirteen days, and um, while I was there, my girlfriend was able to speak for me as far as my art because I don't know Spanish. Oh, okay. So she would go to different businesses and was like, hey, if you want a mural, my boyfriend does a mural and this he's a famous artist in Chicago. I didn't I wouldn't call myself famous because <laughs> that's not me being humble, but that's what she used to pitch me. Um she's like famous artist, uh he's from Chicago. This is his work and I you know, I present myself pretty well my work at least more recently. So like, you know, show them that and she's been able she was able to get me at least uh four murals out of the five that I got. And um, one of the places was called Raccoon Gourmet in Condesa, Mexico City. Wow. And you know, she she was walking, I think, to Walmart or something. I was like, oh, she called me like, yo, there's this uh, there's a spot called Raccoon Gourmet. It looks like a cafe. It's, it's cool because, like, you know, maybe maybe they'll want a mural or something. You want me to ask? They have, look like they have good space. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Definitely ask them, bro, like. 20 minutes later, she's like, oh, yeah, they're down. Like, you know, they say you can paint whatever, you know. And um, so this is this is a restaurant in Gonesa, Mexico City called Raccoon Gourmet. The food's really good. Um, and, uh, yeah, I painted the inside, and I also painted their gate. That's really cool. Yeah, their shit looks fresh as hell now. Like, it, their shit was fresh. Like, their, their furniture and layout, like, very dope. Like, super. Aesthetically pleasing touch. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm. But, like with the murals on top of that like mm. dude their shit's fucking raw you know is that on your page right now yeah we post. um i think yeah it, 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 it should be actually the last one i posted on my my timeline the one. yeah but i also painted their gate um and mm. that was at like that was last not last night but you know uh it was yesterday at, like really cool. in the morning morning i've only done one mural in columbia but this trip back i should try to get more but it's kind of funny because there's a lot of uh Lechon or like pig restaurants, so maybe I could reach out to them. Shit. Yeah, that one like pig. It makes themed. sense too because yeah. you do the the flying pig. I never thought about it that like that. Like as far as like death, you know, it's like an untapped. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's really cool having you on, man. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, one more question from Mister Pinta Muro. He said, "What is your favorite movie that had an impact or influence on your style? Would it be Aladdin?" I guess or a let honestly no, but Aladdin hits home for me because Aladdin was like one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. Um, and then in the sense of like Aladdin didn't have a dad, you know. Mm. I didn't have a dad. Um, he was like my mom raised me decently, you know. I knew that we weren't like super well off. She provided for me, so like, you know, in that sense I connected with him and like 
I don't know. I guess I like brown women and all that <laughs> shit. So I feel like Aladdin influenced me in a lot of ways. Um, nice. But uh, the movies that really has impacted my art, um, I don't know. I mean, you look at stu- Studio Ghibli movies and yeah. like the elegance of of the way that they're able to to present the imagination. I think is really inspiring. Um, I don't think I've reached that level yet because there's a lot of understanding in color and understanding in uh, portions, composition, you know what I'm saying? But that's a level I, I aspire to be at is that type of elegance in illustrating. Um, that's interesting because it's more of a, that's considered anime, right? Studio Ghibli? I believe so. But there's always like certain things that cross over, like uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. People don't want to claim it to be like a anime because it's not like Japanese made. It's like a Korean company that made it or something. Mm. And like, even like I wouldn't even consider Dragon Ball Z an anime because it's more like, uh, I mean, it is, but I don't know. It came on like at Cartoon Network or I don't, like, I don't know. Like, what tsunami the, I don't know what the definition of anime is. Honestly, mm. in my head, anime is just like animated, whatever has like the square eyes and okay looks in that style as anime. But like, I guess I I, I never claimed to know what an, the shit is anime, but I guess there's a certain yeah, spe- some, some people, specificity. Yeah. They're really about that shit. Uh, and this is another question from Connie. I wanted to ask for sure, because what if you had to pick one me- uh, medium, what would it be? Because you're a multi-medium artist and you do a lot. Like you've done rugs, you've done mirrors, uh, grenades, <laughs> like pins and shit this is crazy <laughs> what what's your favorite or like my favorite if you could only have one for the rest of your life if i can only have one for the rest of my one life medium. what would i do spray paint Bro, acrylic i would create giant sculptures just sculptures like calls okay, every okay. Fucking where. sick i don't know how to do that but if i could create one thing it's literally like taking your idea from like your mind to like the real world but mm-hmm. like giant so like, i mean you've you done know, sculptures you've done but there's a difference vinyls. you have you seen swiss beats house he has yeah. literally a giant sculpture i went to the brickland museum where he has like the wooden ones yeah causes shit is crazy even like the inflatables are crazy yeah but like yeah so like if i like if that. i could have one thing for the rest of my life it'd be literally a giant sculpture of like my characters and like the storylines i could tell within that okay i could see it yeah it'll come all right, man. Thank you. Uh, where can they find you? What's your socials? Your anything coming up right that you want to promote? Or um, this will probably come out like in two weeks. So Instagram and TikTok is uh, a l i underscore s i x underscore, which is ali underscore six underscore. Um, as far as what's coming up, man, dude, I have so much to do. So like. <laughs> By the time this comes out, um, I painted five murals in Mexico City. I haven't unveiled three of them um, on my timelines, so they'll be able to see that. Um, but also, um, Casa Arte is having um, their grand opening, which has the mural that I have with Mario Mena, Sosa, Cookie Kwan, Lori Mar, Pancho, Joe Sky, Noel. Um, and I'm going to give out free shirts there. I'll be in Japan by that time, but I'll, I'll, I gave them graphics for them to create on free shirts for anybody who comes out. So Sick. yeah, I'll be in LA and then Japan. And then, uh, I'm going to have some Jap- Japan merch. That's obviously exclusive. Um, and then I also have a show with all star press, uh, which should be in April at the other fair, um, art fair but you won't be here but it'll be yeah. in chicago Sick. yeah okay um so you, anybody who hasn't been to art fair definitely check that out because mm-hmm. it's very inspiring to see the different styles um as well as just understanding a different type of art uh when i was in mexico city i went to art fair and it inspired me to understand um contemporary art in the sense of like understanding creating art for a specific audience rather than just yourself that's like more important than just art that's vain yeah how, how it could speak about what's going on in the world too yeah 
or just about like your the culture of what you you came up on or anything you know what i'm saying like, right yeah i feel like i'm i'm a part of illustration based art which is cool because i can create graphic novels but if i can understand the contemporary world that like could also speak on different cultural subjects i think is really cool so i i that's why i encourage people um go to art fairs yeah to check out other ways to express themselves in art that's fine thank you man again yeah.